Our next exercise is number 14. Maybe you've kind of got the pattern here. We did 10, we did 12, and now we're going to do 14. And this is going to leave you the odd ones to work on, and this will give you an example of what those are going to be like. They're going to be a little similar to the ones we're doing. So here, uh, we're going to do number 14. Notice number 14 didn't have any picture. It just had words here. So it says angle R and angle S are complementary angles. So we have to kind of think back. What was those complementary angles? What did they do? Well, they added up to 90. So again, we're not going to say that these two are equal to each other, but because they told us they're complementary, we're going to add them up to find, uh, to make them 100, I'm sorry, to make them 90. So our equation would look like this. We better put it right here. 12x minus 3 plus 7x minus 2 equals 90 degrees. I have some terms on this side. Again, we have, we have two sides of this equation. We have a whole lot of stuff going on over here on the left side. So I can combine those terms. 12x plus 7x is going to be 19x. Minus 3 minus 2 would be minus 5. And that's still equal to 90. So to undo that minus 5, we're going to add 5 to both sides. And I'm going to get 19x equals 95. So if I have 19x equals 95, we're going to divide both sides by 19, and it's sure enough, x is equal to 5. Since x is equal to 5, I actually still have to answer that question, and this is one of the tricks that the, the math people always play on you when you take those standardized tests. You work real, real hard. We work really hard to get this x is equal to 5, but they want more, so we're going to look and see what are we looking for? And they say, find the measure of angle R. So it tells us R is 12x minus 3. So I can put that 5 back in place, this 5, in place of that x. So I have 12 times 5 minus 3. And 12, minus, or 12 times 5 is 60. And 60 minus 3 is so here we did uh, an angle relationship problem. We didn't have any picture. We just had some words, some of those things that they, def they defined early on, what a complementary angle was. And we were able to write an equation and solve that equation and then find out the answer to, to the question that they asked. So we'll give you a little time to look at this and get that down. Maybe, just maybe, we'll go to another even problem uh, for our next one. So now we're up to number 16. Number 16 is a little different than the rest. Uh, we were given some pictures early on. We were given some uh, terms about our x. This time, we're just given some words. So it says the measure of angle, well, first of all, it says angle 1 and angle 2 form a linear pair. So let's try to think back what that meant, linear pair. And, of course, once again, the root word in that is line. So we have a line. So these two make a linear pair, or they make a line. And we have angle 1 and angle 2, so I'm going to put a ray in here, and I'm going to create two angles, an angle 1 and an angle 2. But I'm going to read on before I put this, because I want to know exactly which one is which. So it says here that the measure of angle 2 is 6 more than twice the measure of angle 1. So that tells us that the measure of angle 2 is bigger. It is 6 more, it's getting bigger by 6, not only just an angle 1, but twice the angle measure of angle 1. So I'm going to draw 
a smaller angle over here, and then a bigger one. So, of course, if 2 is 6 more than twice the measure of angle 1, I'm going to put 2 on the larger angle, and I'm going to put 1 here on the smaller one. And we maybe talked a little bit about when we have words, when we have to change these words, English, into some algebra statements. So, we know it's telling us something about angle 2. Angle 2 is 6 more than twice the measure of angle 1. Well, they didn't tell us anything about angle 1, but they did describe the measure of angle 2. So what happens when they don't tell us about an angle or tell us about anything, that there's some number we don't know anything about? We're going to let that be x. So the measure of angle 1 is going to be x. So I can come down here in my picture, and I'm going to put an x. And now I need to decide, what is the measure of angle 2? How big is it? Well, it says it's 6 more than, so I'm going to have to add 6 on. But I don't know what to add it on to right now, so let's read on. I'm going to add 6 more than, I'm going to add 6 to twice this measure of angle 1. So twice, of course, you all know this, twice means to multiply by 2. So twice the measure of angle 1, we can call that 2x. Now we not only have twice, but we have 6 more than that. So the measure of angle 2 is going to be this 2x plus 6 more. So now I've labeled my angles, I've given them an algebraic, uh, expression to describe what that angle is. Angle 1 is x. Angle 2 is 2x plus 6. And now I need to write an equation. And since they're a linear pair, we know that when I start over this and go all the way over here, when I open that thing all the way up, I get 180 degrees. So I can write an equation that says this x plus the 2x plus 6 is going to equal 180 degrees. And here I have an x, here I have two more x's, so this 1x plus this two more x is going to make 3x. Still have the 6, and it's equal to 180. So now I have this equation, the same thing we almost always end up with. Some number of x plus or minus some number is equal to some other number. So to undo this plus 6, we're going to subtract 6. And that would be 3x equals 174. So 3 times some number is 174. So I would divide both sides by 3. And 3 will go into 174, that would be 5, and that's going to be 24, so that would be 8. So our x is going to equal 58. But once again, we have to determine uh, what the question is. It says find the measure of angle 2. Well, here's the measure of angle 2. It is twice that x plus 6 more. It is twice that 58, or 2 times 58 plus 6 more. And 2 times 58 would be 116 plus 6 more would make the measure of that angle 122. And I can check that 122, and this one was 58, so that 122 plus the 58 would make 180, just like it's supposed to. So there we have an example for number 16. Uh, we may do one more or two before it's all over. Uh, so we'll be back. Have an opportunity to write this down. Make sure you get this on your paper, because we're going to be turning this in. When we get everything finished, we get everything wrapped up. You can also look back and see these examples and see how they work. You can always turn the video back on and check it out whenever you get stuck 
on some things. So we're going to work real, real hard to make sure we get everything taken care of, make sure we get our packets finished, and we'll be successful in the geometry class. Yeah, we kind of changed things up a little bit for you. This time we're taking a look at number 19. Uh, we, it says here, if MO bisects angle M and PMN, sorry, uh, and the measure of angle PMN is 74, the measure of angle OMN is 2x plus 7, find the value of x. And of course you saw me stumble around a little bit. First of all, because we have a lot of letters, and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless we have a picture. And I don't have a picture up here yet, so I'm going to get the picture up, and then we'll finish this little problem. There, that's much, much, much better. Now we have a picture. So let's go back and see what this says. It says, if ray MO bisects angle PMN. So here we have ray MO, and it bisects angle PMN. Well, we have to kind of remember what it means to bisect, what it means to bisect something. So bisect, of course, kind of we kind of maybe trigger that in our head. It sounds a lot like dissects. And when we dissect something, we want to cut it right down the middle. So we want this to cut this angle right down the middle. So the measure of this angle is going to be exactly the same as the measure of this angle. So it bisects it. But here's what it says. It says angle PMN is 74. So this whole big angle is... 74. So there's a couple of things that we can do. If this cuts this right smack dab down the middle, it would make two angles that are equal in their measure. Their measures were going to be equal. They're going to be opened up exactly the same amount. So if the whole thing is 74, some of us might think, well now, if it cuts that 74 into two equal pieces, each of those pieces would have to be half of 74. So you might grab that calculator, decide what is uh, 74 divided into two equal pieces. Or what is one half of 74? And of course the answer to that would be 37 degrees. So each of those angles would be 37. So the measure of angle O, M, N would be 37. But I have another name for O, M, N is 2X plus 7. So I can write that equation. 2X plus 7 would equal 37. And now I could subtract 7 from both sides. And 2X would equal 30. And if I divide both sides by 2, x would equal 15. So here we answered the question, what is x? Uh, given all this information, and we found x is equal to 15. So we're going to let you finish this up now. You had several examples. Uh, you can finish this page with uh, the other ones that, uh, uh, that go along with. This is our first page. Uh, and then we have another one that says this is a two-page document. I may post some of those uh, examples or some of those problems as they get a little bit more difficult. Uh, so check back a little later, but this should get you through the first page uh, of our assignment. And you should be able to move on and do the second one as well. So this is a whole week's worth of uh, work. So it's talking about angle relationships and how they all work together. And there's several algebra problems in there to solve those uh, X's and to find out the measures of some different angles. So good luck with everything. Make sure you get this sent back to me. Uh, if you're sending it, you can drop it off. If you're a uh, dis